Oh my god, this is so frustrating. Can you guys hear me? Because I am ready to pull out my hair. I guess my beard hair, because I have no hair hair. But, oh my god. So, I have no idea what's happening. Please let me know if you could even hear this right now. Um, I've spent the last, like, 20 minutes trying to figure out what the hell is going on with my audio. And right now I'm using this stupid blue snowball because it's the only USB microphone that I have um, that I could even plug in. And oh my god. So let me tell you. So I got a few things to talk about here. So, so yeah, so the audio issues. First of all, this is my shotgun microphone. Uh, it mounts up there, and this is what I use for every single one of my videos. And um, for some reason, OBS, well, okay, let me back up. This morning, I set all this up to stream, and I tested everything, and everything was working 100%. I, set, I even had to set up an audio delay and made that work. Uh, and then I went to the gym. And then... I came back and Windows had updated itself. So I had to log back in and I had to reopen OBS and uh, you know set everything up again and all of a sudden I had no audio. And this is connected to my A cam all the time and um, it works flawlessly all the time except now when it just will not work at all. So I tried connecting this to the B cam which is the um, that didn't work. Uh, I tried adding it as a separate audio device. That didn't work. I, I don't even know. So I hope that, I mean, like at this point I'm like 10 minutes late and I hate being late. Um, so, so I just grabbed this thing, which I, I can't stand. I don't even know, um, what the audio sounds like. If it even sounds halfway decent here from getting like crazy echo or, I mean, let me know compared to, if you guys know the normal way my channel sounds, how does this sound as a comparison? I guess that's an interesting thing to look at. Um, but I've been like, I've been going nuts here. This is, this is very, very, very frustrating. So, um, okay. Um, so if this is still working, let me know how this sounds and I'm going to get on with the video because this actually might take a little while and we'll be here for a bit. Um, we lost Mike when you went to B-Cam. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, let me fix that. Okay, this should work. And this should work now. There should be audio now. As I scroll through the scenes, you should be able to hear me continuously without interruption. So, um, <clears throat> okay. All right, so what's going on guys? I never stream in the afternoon. And um, today uh, I had a couple of things in the works and unfortunately, I had to default to this, which I actually think is going to work out great. I, I love streaming for you guys, and I hope that you guys enjoy it too. Um, it's an interesting way to interact with people, and it's, an, it's a good way to get feedback on my content and the videos and whatnot uh, while we're doing something that hopefully we all enjoy. Uh, so... Um, my gaming PC basic series, which I do want to just touch on briefly, uh, that's going to return, uh, probably in the next week or two. And what we're going to be doing the next video, I think is going to be peripherals. So I'd like to know, you know, throughout the stream, just let me know what your thoughts are on that whole series. If you guys are getting anything out of it, I know most of you are probably pretty experienced builders. But, you know, I did this to be like more evergreen style content. I know there's a lot of people out there still looking to get into the hobby and hopefully this kind of stuff helps. Um, so let me know what your thoughts are. I'm going to do peripherals and then, you know, I'm kind of bouncing around. It would be easy to just do like CPU, GPU, motherboard. It's like straightforward. But I think if we do CPU, GPU, motherboard, 
you know, memory or something like that in a row, then people might not like tune back in to see the next entry in the series. And I kind of want to keep, keep people guessing because I think it's all pretty important. No, Siri, I don't need you right now. Um, it's all pretty important and I want to keep people tuning in. And so we're going to do peripherals next. Um, the build Clifford that we're getting in today's description is something that I want to get into because I ran a poll yesterday. Um, and the poll was, what do you guys want to see on this build? And I have an awesome, awesome... 2011 dream machine system that I had parted out uh, bought a whole bunch of stuff on eBay maybe you guys have seen me tweeting about some of it um, over the past few days um, this is the motherboard for that build this is the EVGA Z68 for the win uh, let me yeah let me do a little overhead action here um, this board is so sick uh, it's like look at all these these PCIe lanes you could do up to quad SLI uh, it's got features that, you know, for 10 years ago were crazy to see. It's got power and reset switches. It's got the LED postcode. Uh, it's got a crazy VRM heat sink. This board is awesome. Um, the problem is that uh, when I got it, I uh, it, it came wrapped. It, I, don't, I bought it from eBay seller and he like wrapped it really tightly in bubble wrap, but without a socket cover on it. So in jostling around and shipping the pins in the in the socket got bent <clears throat> i wrote him pretty angrily to be honest with you and was like what are you doing this isn't it wasn't a cheap board but the thing is like at the time like i wanted to use this in a video this weekend and i couldn't return it to him i needed it so i told him i was like look just send me back 20 bucks i'm gonna try to fix this myself uh, and you know if i can't i can't but whatever i'll just leave it at that so i kind of went to work and I uh, took out a little you know, razor blade and a magnifying glass and I thought I had fixed it. I, I put it, uh, I put the chip in it, which I, I don't wanna tell you a lot of the details about the rest of the build, but I put the CPU in, uh, booted it up, it booted into BIOS, no problem. And uh, here, let's just do this. Booted into BIOS with, uh, ooh. I have a, well, I don't know where they are. I have like little uh, stands for this. There we go. So uh, I booted into BIOS, no problem. I can mess around in the BIOS. Um, and I was like, all right, this is gonna work. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad I was able to fix it. Today, as I'm getting ready for the stream, you guys had voted yesterday that you wanted to see the 2011 Dream System on this build and I was very excited to do it. Um, so this morning I wanted to prep a little bit just to make sure that I have everything working. Um, I put the CPU, uh, I mean the CPU was in, I put the, I put a cooler on it. Um, I put some memory in it and I wanted to load up an operating system on an SSD just to have that. So when, um, this was all built, I could boot it up for you guys. And as soon as I hit the power button, I got, um, and, and <laughs> the LED postcode displayed the letter F which uh, is appropriate, I guess. And uh, no matter what I did, I cleared the CMOS, uh, I tried a different CPU in the socket, I messed around with the memory configuration, different DIMMs, different slots, uh, tried different graphics card, I tried unplugging all the peripherals, tried unplugging the SSD, did not matter. No matter what I did, as soon as I hit the power button, F. So uh, I think maybe my repair job didn't work properly or maybe it was like borderline working and then like maybe one of the pins shifted somehow or something when I put the cooler on it um, in any event I think the board is dead uh, so I have to get another one so unfortunately we're not going to be doing the 2011 dream system today even though this will happen on the channel and it's going to be epic because I have um, I have a three-way SLI set up for it uh, so today um what uh what we are gonna do is last week i built this system and a lot of you guys commented that you know i shouldn't be building this 5950x system in the h510 elite uh because the airflow wasn't that great and i've built in this case before and i really never had any problems with it 
but I at the time I used a giant knock to an air cooler and I didn't have anything obstructing the front like a radiator now this is partially my fault but um, I wanted this build to be pretty so when I built it you can see that I have the the air two RGB fans up there uh, these are the fans that came with this case but they are not the fans that came with this AIO the, the fans that come with the AIO are Air, NZXT Air branded, but they're different fans. They're made more for static pressure. The Air 2 RGB fans that come with this case are rated for like some absurdly low amount of static pressure. And I discovered this after running the system for a bit and rendering out last week's video. And in doing so, the CPU hit you know thermal throttle limits, uh, it clocked down, and the fans were just blasting at full speed. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know, like I reseated the cooler. Uh, I checked for any obstructions. The flow in the pump was good. <clears throat> so I, then I went and looked at the stats for the fans. And I was like, oh, man, they're not able to push any air across this radiator at all. Like I put, put, could put my hand in here and I felt nothing. Like the, the fans are just not capable of it. So um this is partially my fault and partially nzxt's fault the case isn't great for airflow but normally it would be okay if i used the regular fans for this cooler um but what i decided to do is um i'm going to move this to a different case and put a 360 on this 5950x and also i'm going to upgrade the fans and i'm going to upgrade the gpu now i know when i built this the point was to make it a simple, compact, like not overkill system. And I still think that this system is amazing. And um, for most people, for even for me, it's perfectly fine. Like this is, I, I would love to use this system full time. But because I am moving, I'm gonna move the, uh, to a different case. I'm also going to upgrade the GPU. Um, so, <clears throat> I go with one of these. Uh, I haven't built with a 3080 Ti yet, so this will be the first one. Uh, I mean, I've had 3090s in the past. I've had EVGA 3090s in the past. This is going to be basically the same card aesthetics wise. Um, and as far as gaming, which I very rarely do, it's going to also be basically the same as a 3090. Um, the only thing that it is lacking <clears throat> is VRAM versus the 3090. But I don't need that much VRAM. Like when I edit, um, the card gets significantly loaded in Premiere, but not to the point where we're, we're choking on on video memory. So I think this is going to be really a good solution for me. It it a 3080 Ti is I'm going to use it. Like it's for what I do on my PC. I render out a lot of videos. And like it's going to be used. It's not just going to sit there idle. So I'm I'm fine with putting it in. But to be honest, like the difference between, I, I came from a 3080, went to a 3070, came from a Threadripper 3970X, went to a 5950X, so downgraded across the board and the editing experience, as long as we weren't thermal throttling, was actually really almost the same. Like I think that most people think that they need more than they do. Uh, I happen to have this stuff in the office, so I'm going to use it, but I don't think you need it. And I like to make sure that people understand that in a lot of my different videos that like, you don't, you see a lot of people being like, well, we're just going to blast off here and put, you know, build a $10,000 machine. And I'm not going to say that I haven't done that, but it kind of makes you, it kind of makes a lot of people feel bad. Like, well, I can never afford that. You could probably afford at some point a 70 series graphics card, probably. Um, and it's going to be more than enough for most people. So, um, what we're doing with this is I have to take this apart and then transfer the parts over to the new case, which you'll see in a minute. So why don't I get started taking this apart? Um, <clears throat> and uh, start talking to you guys. So, okay. All right, so let me, so let me scroll up. Hey Mike, if you see any interesting comments that I maybe missed, um, you can, you can, can you like repost them here, like copy paste them or something, or even text them to me or whatever. Um, I'm going to scroll up and see if I missed anything interesting, but it's, it's hard for me to catch up sometimes if I'm just, if I'm just talking, I'm talking my butt off here. Okay. 
All right, so what's up with you guys? Are you enjoying your weekend? If you're in the U.S., it's Labor Day weekend, so long weekend, which is always nice. Um, <clears throat> if you guys have any uh, any good any plans or anything like that, let me know. Um, I know it's a big vacation weekend for a lot of people, like you know, people going to the beach or um, whatever else. I'm going to be doing this with you guys, so that's okay. I got to disassemble everything back here first. Uh, wait, is the system already built? No, it's not. No, I, um, nope. Yeah, well, sort of, <laughs> but no, we're rebuilding it basically. Also planning on um, putting in the new the the three by eight pin PCIe strimmer cable. So hopefully, I don't. Hopefully the orientation isn't funky. Sometimes EVGA's graphics cards have a uh, like a kind of an upside down uh, PCIe power configuration. So if that's the case, then you have to like take these and take the light up part and flip it around then that's kind of a pain. So hopefully that's not the case. Oh man, I zip tied this stuff in. I don't have any snips down here. You know, just grab a different power supply real quick. Let me get this stuff out of here, then I'm gonna grab a different power supply. Super Chat, 20 bucks. Oh man, you guys are the best. Al says, love the vids. Question about idle temps that as shown, do you keep the power plan to balanced or set it to ultimate? I notice my temps are usually higher than what most people are showing in videos. Uh, so that that question has a lot of variables to it. I don't know what your case is or your cooling solution or even your hardware, like what processor you're using. So I don't know what normal should be. Um, even if you have the performance, if you have it on performance, you shouldn't be seeing super high temps when idle because it's idle. Like it's it's not really going to be doing very much. It's going to be clocked up a little bit, but it's not. It shouldn't be running super high temperatures at all. Um, most of the time, God, sorry, this is such a mess. Most of the time, your idle temperatures for um, any like reasonable non-enthusiast PC build. Your idle temperature should be somewhere around 30 to 35 degrees. Like if you're under 30, if you're under 30 degrees C idle, you're doing good. Like, and that's not unusual to see that either. Um, but like if you're in anywhere in that area, you're probably fine. Um, here's the GPU we used last time. RTX 3070 PNY. I like this card. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would need a little more information before like telling you exactly what might be wrong. But um, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot of factors there. <clears throat> so are we doing 2011 or 2021? We are doing 2021. Sorry to disappoint some people. I know you wanted to see 2011, but I went over all that in the beginning of the stream. We will do 2011 uh, soon on the channel. I need another motherboard. 20 bucks, man, you guys are the best. PC Tech Hustle. Hey, Brian, just showing some love. Thank you very much. Keep up with the great content, bud. Have a great holiday weekend and happy building. Oh, man. That's awesome. Your, this community has been so good. Like I, I've, it's been a, um, it's been a rough like six to eight months. Uh, and uh, you know the support that I get from my longtime viewers and this community as a whole has been amazing. And it makes it so that I want to keep going, <laughs> because to be honest, sometimes I don't. Um, and you know, you guys coming out and showing support and. It's just like, 
sometimes that's what I need because uh, I, I don't. It's really difficult to put your heart and soul into something for you know six whatever seven years now, and um, just kind of see it destroy itself for and you, like you're just kind of standing by and like watching helplessly and i'm really doing everything i can to make that not happen and hopefully to continue this journey with you guys um so you know seeing people that really do enjoy the content and are getting something out of it and um are really encouraging me to keep going is like that's great it's heartwarming you know uh, as cheesy as that might sound and um, I really do appreciate you guys. And Mike, Mike can speak to this because we've had conversations like offline about it. But like, this really stresses me out. Like, <laughs> I I do I do everything I can to 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 make the content good and to try to engage viewers. And you know, it's just after that though, there's only so much that I could that I can do. Um, and then it's kind of up to YouTube. And Unfortunately, uh, leaving it up to YouTube recently hasn't really gone very well. So uh, it's depressing and I've, I've struggled with it a lot over the past few months. And uh, you know, thank you. Thank you very much for the encouragement. That's what I'm trying to say. <sighs> Is he going to replace the, the Asus ROG board with a different brand? Um, I am not going to. I'm going to leave the uh, the Dark Hero board in uh, and swap it over. I'm pretty sure this is like the best X570 board out there. I mean, there's there's more expensive ones like the uh, the the Azrock Aqua, but Azrock is shit. And um, I think the Asus Formula is also more expensive. But the only reason it's more expensive is because it has a water block on it. Um, other than that, like, this is the best one out there, so. Uh, Mike, oh, so, so Mike, Mike, Mike is our moderator, Mike the Manic Geek, as always, um, production assistant at CES and, uh, moderator extraordinaire, but uh, everybody say hi to Mike. But he says, Algo algorithms suck so bad I don't even know what it wants. I tried changing my latest video title and thumbnail. It only seems to make it worse. Yeah, so you never really know, right? Like if something isn't going well, you, you assume that you just should be changing it to change it, uh, which I've tried. And like sometimes that works and sometimes you get the opposite effect. So like you never know what's going to end up happening when you do that. Um, and you can only kind of guess like and that's that's one of the reasons that this could be so so frustrating is like you're just you're literally living your life guessing you know if i did this for a living then um i i don't know that i could i could stand it mentally like this is part of my living but it is not my primary income so i can withstand a little bit of fluctuation and uncertainty but Overall, man, this is that's not how you really want to be living. Uh, I need to grab, um, I need to grab a power supply, and I need to grab um, paper towels. Super chat came in while I was while I was out of office. This message is brought to you by Taco Bell and Mountain Dew's Baja Blast Freeze, the best drink for all PC builders. Get yours today. I I, I don't know how I got suckered into an ad read there, um, but normally I charge a lot more than five dollars for an ad read. So if you guys want me to do any ad reads, then um, make sure to up your donations. I'm just kidding. Thanks, Nora. You get you're awesome. Uh, okay. 
Dave's Techway, glad I caught you live today. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for hanging out. It's going to be a fun one. It might also be a very long one, <laughs> depending on how things go. Um, so, this case is, is I like this case because it's so compact, but it does, does lead to issues like you're not able to manipulate a motherboard with uh, case fans installed. So, I've been trying to keep my 1050 Ti alive for long enough for the market to get back to normal and to buy an RX 6700 XT RTX 3070. Yeah, a lot of people are in that boat and um, I think that it's, <clears throat> I think the, that a lot of people get swept up in the new technology craze and they see new stuff coming out and they feel like that their stuff is all of a sudden insufficient. <clears throat> and 1050 Ti might be getting a little a little long in the tooth regardless. But think of it like this. Like if you have a graphics card, if you have a 1050 Ti, right, and you're gaming on it and you're playing at 1080p because that's what you have to do with it, with that card. Um, so you're playing at 1080p and you're having a good time. And then... Um, the next day, they announce the RTX 7000 series, right? Does that one day make it so that you, you can't play on your 1050 Ti at 1080p anymore? Or is everything still exactly the same and you're still going to have a good time playing with your, with your graphics card? You know, like I think a lot of people have the have an incorrect mentality when it comes to stuff like that and consumerism unfortunately is very pervasive and you end up in a, a never-ending cycle of uh, i have to buy this i have to buy that um and i suppose that tech channels contribute to this right um and i'm sorry if i if that is partially my fault i'm also sorry that you can't really see what i'm doing here i don't want to flip it i don't want to flip the case down yet to show you the overhead because uh i need to be able to i can't like look into it anyway we'll get to the overhead in a minute so anyway yeah i apologize if i contribute to uh this consumerism and um <sighs> It, it's something that I struggle with sometimes because I know that there are people looking to like tech review channels for advice, uh, not only buying advice, but like just overall advice, like not, is this a good product, but like, do I need it in my life kind of a thing. And I think people make those evaluations and factor the wrong things in, you know, video games are supposed to be fun, right? And if you're, if you're still having fun, and you don't necessarily need something that just came out, why stress about it? There are a lot of people that don't have a graphics card that need a graphics card, and that you know is a different situation. But if you have an older one that works fine and you're having fun with it, then I don't understand the the you know the craze to 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 go and, and get something new. <clears throat> All right, rolling along here. So say this is like along the lines of what I was talking about. Jeff H, I'm still running a 6700K, 1060, GTX 1060, and SSDs apparently. Is it time to upgrade? So I don't. I mean, I don't know. Like, is, you tell me. Is it time to upgrade? What do you do with your computer? Do you need to upgrade it? Do you find that you can't do what you want to do? Like, that's, that's what triggers upgrade. Not, not What triggers need to upgrade shouldn't be there is something new. The, the, the trigger should be... My PC is no longer meeting my needs. So just use that as a, as a way to evaluate your situation. Do you need something to, else um, in order to make it so that your PC works the way you need it to work? <sighs> 
So this is the the dark hero. Um, this board is awesome, and it's got some crazy like reflecting lighting effects on it. Um, I don't know if you guys could see it right here. There's like a little adhesive that they put a sticker on it, and I had to take that off. And now like I can't get that adhesive off. I know I could just goo gun it or something. I just haven't. Um, but this is the dark hero, and this is what I am using. I love this board. This board's awesome. Although I did break off one of the PCIe clips, but that's okay. So we're going to put this aside. Okay. All right. Now we got to take out like the hard drives and I'm going to, I'm just going to, because the Power supply is like here. Maybe we can do it in these. So like, I uh, it's like zip tied in, and then um, I whatever. I don't have any snips, so we're just gonna go with a different one anyway. Uh, here we go. Now I'll be honest with you guys. Um, cable management is not a thing that I do, and I know that probably is gonna make some people angry. But um, to be honest with you, like. I mean, so, I, all right, I mean, I, oh, I just dropped something on the floor. I, I, I will cable manage to a degree, right? But I'm not somebody that's going to go nuts with cable management uh, for the simple reason that I'm constantly changing things around. And like, if I spent like however many hours doing cable management on every single one of my builds, that's like all I would ever do. So... I generally don't cable manage as long as I could fit, uh, or I do enough cable management so that I could fit the components in and have the pan the back panel close flush, um, and then after that I just don't worry about it. So here are my well, here are the the here's the storage that I use. Uh, these are Seagate um, Iron Wolf. Pros, 14 terabytes each. Burt Macklin, uh, Asus clips seem to be really brittle. Yeah, I've broken them on a number of boards, and I don't know, um, I don't know if it's something with their boards or if it's just because I happen to use their boards a lot. Um, but yeah, I have broken a number of those clips. Mike, yeah, if you live closer, you'd be over here cable managing all my shit. <clears throat> Do you manage your personal builds? So this is my personal build. Um, and no, generally not. These things are massive. Seagate Iron Wolf. All the videos that you watch are right here in my hand. This is where I store all this, all this stuff. All the, I'm honestly thinking, like, I really want to switch to um, all SSD storage. But the fact that I need this much storage, it would mean that, like, an SSD array of some kind would be prohibitively expensive. I've actually been talking with a, um, with a company... Uh, that does uh, like enterprise storage solutions. They contacted me and they wanted to know if I wanted to check out their SSDs. They have like um, uh, U.2 SSDs and up to like 16 terabytes or something. And I was like, yes, I definitely do. <laughs> so um, perhaps I'll be checking that out soon. Um, we're still trying to sort them th some things out. All right, this can go over there I'll get that later don't worry all right so power supply is staying in the cooler I'm switching over I think I have everything out of here okay. so let me get rid of this
Do you have any videos on NAS or MAS builds or guides? I don't. And that's not, that's probably the part of my um, PC knowledge that I am deficient in, the most deficient in. I have some basic knowledge of how to set them up and how they function, but I'm not like Wendell. So, um, you know, uh, I, I tend to use local storage if I can. But maybe that's a mistake. So, I don't know. Uh, okay, so. Are you still selling your Threadripper parts? So, I did sell it. Uh, I was on the fence. And uh, I was thinking of, when I built this small system, I was, I was taking some stuff out of it. And, like, as I said in the video, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Like, I had listed it for sale initially. And then I was like, huh, maybe I should keep it. But I still had it listed up for sale. And then somebody contacted me and, and made me a good offer. And it's somebody who's going to use it. Um, and all those parts are like, there was, I don't know if there was any review, review sample in there at all. Except like the cables, maybe. Like that was all stuff that I bought and paid for myself. And like, I was like, you know, it's a good, good amount of money to, to invest and not, you know, to just have that money sitting there. Like I... It'd be nice to have that as a return, so uh, I did sell it. So it's actually still over there. I have I have to pack it up, but uh, I am gonna be sad to see it go. That that PC was awesome, is awesome. Um, but uh, I'm sure the guy who bought it is gonna use it. <clears throat> uh, any more plans on collaborations with people now? Vaccines are so ubiquitous. Seems like they really helped your channel, and you seem to enjoy them. Uh, yeah, so I have, um, I've been saying this now, it seems like for a while. Here's the case we're using. <laughs> this is a, a Corsair 4000D Airflow. So, yeah, collabs. Uh, I've been saying this for a little while now, but, like, you're right about, like, the pandemic stuff getting in the way. Um... But yes, I have collabs that are like scheduled. Uh, just I ha we haven't we haven't done them yet. So um, a couple of collabs with people who you guys are very familiar with, and uh, who I'm sure you will enjoy seeing in videos. And it's going to be like um, multi-part videos also. So or not not necessarily multi-part videos, but like multi videos within the collab. So like we'll be doing different stuff and you'll, it'll be like, not just like one and done. So I am excited about that. Yes. I was wondering, since I still have your X299 with 7980XC still in my system. Oh, did you say something? Are you, oh, you're still selling. Oh, right. Okay. You asked if they're selling parts. Yeah. Uh, the case reminds me of a home radiator. Oh, I guess because of this. <laughs> I guess so. This case is really good. Um, it's also almost the same dimensions as the the H500. So, or the H510 or whatever. So I don't feel like I am really going to be sacrificing a whole lot as far as um, room on my desk goes. And I'm going to be picking up a lot of cooling hopefully those new Corsair cases have surprisingly great build and finish quality yes they absolutely do um, and I Corsair so uh, Corsair sent me over they have a they have a case that I don't know that I've, I've seen around it's a 5000 D but it comes with it's like their IQ water cooling edition or something it comes with a built-in distro in the front of the case like like here comes with a built-in distro and pump uh, and they wanted me to do a build in it like a, a full water cool build and I agreed I was like this is gonna be awesome and there was some huge delay with getting the the case over to me and um, it was like months delayed and I had planned to do this build like I don't remember in like March or something 
and um, they the case didn't get to me to like May. I don't remember the exact dates, but I was, at that time I was like, I have this, all this other stuff lined up. Like I, I I can't do this now. And they're like, all right, you know, we'll get to it when you can. I'm like, okay. So I still have the 5000D case with that distro that I really want to use at some point. So we'll see. Uh, I hope that uh, that I'll get a chance to use it, and it's a really cool case too. Five bucks, four ninety nine from Silver. As always, good videos with great content. Well, cheers. Thank you very much. Well, I'm gonna choke on some ice here. That's cool. Okay. So for those of you guys unfamiliar, this is what the uh, the back side of the 4000D looks like. I ship it with some foam in here. Man, I'm going to have a mess on my hands after this. But unlike with the NZXT case, when you're getting it, when you're dealing with the hard drives, it comes out in a tray as opposed to having to remove the whole cage, which is kind of nice. Also, this part right here um, comes out. If I can make it come out, there we go. Um, so that you can extend the space here for uh, for a 360 red and fans, and that's what we'll be doing. Um. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we do, I guess why don't we, why don't I do guy? Why don't we mount these first? That's a nice layout, says Mike. Better than the Define 7 Compact. Yeah, the Corsair cases have been really, they've been stepping up, man. Been stepping up. Come on. Come on. I do like these toolless mounts as well. Like, although, um, I also, I also like the fact that I mounted it backwards. That's always fun. Uh, Jesse wants to know how much this costs. So, I don't remember how much, what the MSRP is on this one. I think it's like a hundred bucks. It's cheap. Cheap. Relatively cheap. And uh, now I can't, because I put this in backwards, I can't get this out. That's fun. All right. There we go. All right. Now let's put this in the right way. All right. Number one. And number two. Okay. So these are gonna go. Actually, why don't we do this? You can see me drop them right in. Boom. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> Why don't, before I have any of these, any fans or anything else like that in here, why don't I, why don't I mount the motherboard and uh, get that all taken care of, squared away. So you guys got any questions for me, fire them off. I am here for you today. Okay, so. Get 
this right. This is hard. I can't. I could like hardly see into this. I think we got it though. I think we got it. Corsair sells the airflow panels on their website for like five dollars or ten dollars shipping. So, yeah, I, well, you say the issue is that they're never in stock. Well, that that's I guess that's a separate issue, but like that seems like a really good idea. Right? You know, like they have they have the ability to produce this case with great aesthetic appeal, like the the four thousand D. Um, what do they call it? RGB, I guess. Um, and um, then they ha then then you can just make it into a better performing case if that's what you need. So that seems like a great way to go about things. It gives it, you know, then it gives Corsair the opportunity to sell more things as well. I went from a 1080 to a 3070 Ti. I have an 8700K. What CPU should I go with? I think you should go with the 8700K. Why would you want to change? You look like you're sweating to death in that hoodie under those lights with the hat on. <laughs> no, I'm actually good. So I I guess maybe I'm a little shiny. Am I a little shiny? Maybe I'm a little shiny? Uh, so right before this, um, I, I said earlier in the stream, I just, I just got back from the gym. And after that, I took a quick shower. So I... I don't know if you guys experience this, but like if I go to the gym or if I'm playing sports or like even just like mowing the lawn and I'm sweating um, and I hop right in the shower, I tend to still be sweating afterwards. Like, I don't know. It's like my body doesn't shut off the sweat for a while. Do you guys get that too? So yeah, I guess maybe uh, I was sweating a little bit, but I feel fine in the in the hoodie, which you guys should go and check out at the bpscustoms.com store. Okay. Going to be a tight squeeze with the power supply and cables. Might want to move that hard drive case forward a bit. I can't move it forward because we're going with a 360 rad. Ever thought about doing videos on modding and custom builds? Don't want to share secrets of the trade. So I no, I that's not it at all. I I am not a modder. Like I I have modded cases before, um, but I am in no way a, like great at it. <laughs> like I think that I am mediocre at best, and my skills are more out of necessity than expertise. So that's the reason why you don't see those kinds of videos from me on like tutorials like. How to be a great case modder, because that would be terribly disingenuous of me. And uh, I don't even know if anybody would learn anything. You'd probably just get dumber by watching it. Come on, Seda. Actually, let me do this. Side by side, say to action. It's time for hard hitting questions. Why don't you have a cat? Maybe that's why your viewer count has dropped. Dogs are out, cats are in. Uh, I have two cats and a dog. We had three cats. One recently passed away. That was a very difficult time because I had had him forever. He was awesome. Um, raised him from a little kitten. But these things happen in life. But in any event, I do have two cats and a dog, so uh, you can go straight to hell, Nori. <clears throat> I'm going to miss you. You're going to miss me? Why are you going to miss me? Where am I going? Am I going somewhere?
So here's a little tip for you guys that may or may not even be useful. Um, when you're doing a build and you know that things are going to get crowded, uh, do all these do the smaller cables um, before you like the, the front panel, like the USB. Connect them before you start populating the case with the bigger stuff, like the graphics card and the cooler, uh, and on the power supply. Because once you start doing that, and your wiring gets to be a giant jumbled mess, then you end up it's it's harder to route these little cables to where they need to go. HD audio, you know, I always connect the HD audio cable and I never use the HD audio cable. Literally never. But if it's there, let's plug it in. The front panel connectors are always a pain. You're not wrong about that. But you know, I've kind of gotten to the point where I've memorized where they go, at least for the most part. Watch me mess this up now. Okay, so we've got front panels connected, we've got HD audio connected, we've got USB 3 connected, we've got USB 3.1 Type-C connected. Uh, okay, looking good. I don't think things are, things are rolling here. I enjoy your content and I check every day for the Red Bell. I never got to build my own PC because it was easier to buy a pre-built to get my hands on a graphics card. I appreciate the live stream. No problem. Thanks for watching. And I think a lot of you, uh, a lot of people out there are in the same boat. There's no shame in buying pre-built. I, I mean, do what you got to do to get your hands on the hardware that you need. That buying a pre-built doesn't mean that you're some kind of a pleb or, you know, like... People that make fun of people for buying the pre-build are just idiots. So don't even don't even mind them. Like, do what makes you happy, man. Like, if that's if that's the easiest way for you to get the hardware you need, then just do it. Who cares? Um. Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up on some content, uh, content comments here and see um, what people are saying. I'm going to raise the volume of this audio a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so usually I pull out the manual at this point to make sure I'm getting the polarity of the HDD. <laughs> yeah. Shellbacks here. What's up? What's good, Brian? What's what's good with you, man? How are you feeling? Did did you did you get banged up somehow? I, I, I saw on Twitter that you're tweeting like you were okay or something like that. I don't I don't even know what happened. Um, did you get an accident or something happened? I hope you're all right. Everybody, go follow Shellback. Also, uh, he does some great charity builds. Longtime supporter of the channel. Was one of the original Patreon members actually. Um, back in the day when I had a Patreon. Let's get this in. Uh, 
Oh, these are, that's not the one that I want. Go to hell. So, let me uh, show you guys this. So on the H500, it has, it has a cable management bar. Let's do this. It has a cable management bar right here. Same as this, right? But it's just, it's an elevated bar with space on either side of it. Like there's space here and then there's space there. So what I chose to do with the strimmer was to plug it in and then go over the cable management bar and then in the other side, which gave a nice long run to the strimmer cables. Here, things might be difficult if I leave this, uh, this bar in place because I got nowhere to go with this. There's nowhere to go in. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. What can I do? Should I should I cut this? Should I turn this? Should I after what I just said, should I turn this into a modding stream where I cut this? I feel like I should if I do that, I should do it not here because my Dremel's outside anyway. Hmm. I didn't think about this. Poor planning on my part. Give me a minute to, to stare at this and figure out what I need to do here. problem is if you take this bar off if you take this bar off it's just a big empty space behind it it's just this so that's not pretty so that bar needs to be there hmm All right, well, I guess we're gonna cut this unexpectedly. Unexpected mod session. Sorry, I know you guys can't see me. I'm trying to figure out like where this needs to go. Give me a minute here. gotta go in here so I think what I want to do is like I think I want to have it go straight in like here I'm gonna give myself a little bit of leeway here Can you please focus down here, camera? Come on. You suck. Down here. 
Oh, well, this thing's sticking up. It's not going to focus. Okay. I think that's right. Nope. It's a good thing I turned it. It's not right. I know this is riveting for you guys. So this was completely unplanned. Maybe that was the problem. All right, now I got stupid pencil smear that I'm gonna have to magic eraser off. Okay. Now I gotta get this thing off of here. screw not another screw okay Ugh. all right so um like i said i have to i got a magic erase for this but i think cutting like cutting here is going to be good this way, it'll give us a little bit of extra room. Uh, so, so this can go through. Yeah, that's probably good. I need need something straight. This is why I don't do modding tutorials. Yikes. Yeah, I should have taped this off first. Yeah. Okay, uh, all right, you, gotta, you guys got to give me a second. I got to go get my tools and stuff. I guess I'll do this on camera.
All right, we're back. We are back. Uh, sorry for the delay. What's the next best thing to a Gamers Nexus mod mat? A Gamers Nexus uh, mouse pad. Perfect for all of your dremeling needs. That's not true. Don't use this for dremeling. Now, because I already marked this on here, I'm just going to cut it on here. But if you guys are, are um, using a dremel or cutting at home, um, you should use painter's tape. Put painter's tape over the area, draw on the painter's tape, cut through the painter's tape, and then take the painter's tape off. It uh, There's a couple benefits to that. One is you don't mark up your surface like an idiot. Um, the other is that if, you, if your Dremel wanders a little bit, you have a far less chance of marking up the outside of the surface. Um, so be careful if you're doing this at home, please. I am not a professional, and normally this would be in a vice because normally I would do it out in my garage, but we're gonna do it on camera. Do you have hearing protection also? Nope. Too loud <laughs> let me uh let me let me nuke this volume for a second here sorry i'm really sorry i realized that this is way too loud so um volume is all the way down now
All right. That's part one. We got our hole. So, yeah, that's not perfectly square. So, you know, honestly, like, like I said, this isn't the ideal conditions for doing this. And if I was outside and I had this in a vise, um, I think things would probably go much better. Um, but we do it for the content, I guess. So you guys know what not to do when dremeling your case. How about that? But always make sure when, um, when you do any kind of cutting in metal that you're going to then smooth the edges because otherwise you could really hurt yourself. All right, so here is the um, finished product, and I'm going to now try to get rid of the, some of this black on here, and you can maybe see what I'm talking about with like why you'd want to use painter's tape, because it, uh, if, any of the, if the Dremel walks at all, it, it'll take off the finish, so normally this would look better. Um, but such is life, I guess. Um, give me a second. Let me see if I could, uh, get rid of this, uh, these marks. Maybe I'll grab some, uh, maybe I'll grab some isopropyl or something. Oh my god. All right. We're okay. We survived. All right. So what do you guys think? Test the cable. Okay. Okay. Test the cable. Cable fits. Okay. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was weird. That wasn't what I planned to do today. But, uh, you know, you take life as it comes.
the trip should be edited into a new intro of yours. Yeah, it would uh, kind of uh, embody the whole philosophy of the channel. Fall on your face and then recover. All right, well, so here it is, uh, all done. And uh, it looks okay. There's like a little bit of uh, paper towel still stuck in there. But um, the pencil marks are gone. The edges are like pretty smooth. And uh, yeah, I think this will work fine. Okay, so now we got a whole freaking mess to clean up here. Thanks guys. You want to do this today? You made me. So yeah, so if you guys are looking to cut in your case, a couple of things you need to keep in mind. You need to know what material you're cutting through first and foremost. Um, cases are primarily made of steel or aluminum. And if you're cutting through steel, you're gonna have a much tougher time than with aluminum. Um, I'm not saying you can't cut it. You could certainly cut it. It's not, you know, even like just with a Dremel, it's fine. But you will, you might go through more blades. Um, you're going to encounter a lot more sparks and shards of metal. Um, whereas aluminum is much softer, much easier to work with, and uh, cuts pretty quickly. So you should recognize what material you're going to be working with first before you do anything else. Second, make sure you have eye protection. Um, that's this. These things have saved my eyes more than I could count. Um, things happen when you're cutting, like pieces fly off. Like even like I've had blades. So these blades, where did I put the blade? So these blades are small, right? These are really thin blades. They break, and if they break and a bit flies off of there and you're not wearing eye protection man that's an easy way to lose an eye uh, third thing always wear gloves even if it's just like some regular work gloves wear those um, these are not anything special I got these at Home Depot or something but they're they're leather um, and they're like puncture resistant at least so just put something on your hands take the appropriate safety precautions and um, and then, like I said before, if you're going to be, <laughs> if you're going to be cutting, um, use painter's tape, put the painter's tape on first, mark over the painter's tape <clears throat> and then cut on the painter's tape. You will, you will have a much better time than I just did. Oh, oh, now it smells like alcohol. Man. Okay. Got any spare rubber to line the hole? I don't. I don't think I have any grommets that I could use. Um, but that's okay. All right. Also, um, here's another thing. I guess don't um, don't ever cut anything in uh, if you can avoid it. I guess don't ever cut anything while it's in the case, and don't ever cut anything around other electronic components. So this is now in, let me see if I can get this through. Well, Mike, maybe not smelling like isopropyl alcohol. Maybe maybe a different type of alcohol. Yes, certainly true. This is still a really tight fit. That. Uh, let's get down there. Okay. 
Oh man, this might actually work. Check that out. How do we like that? Alright, I am excited about this. I think this works really well. Um, boom. Okay. Alright. So, we got our first cable in. And uh, success on the mod. That's good. Uh, now, I'll do the cooler. Yeah, cooler. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me do the... No, I'll do the cooler first. All right. Is the Corsair Airflow case as big as the Lian Lee Olema Dynamic case? It looks kind of small. It's, it is. It's very small. It's nowhere near that size. This is a pretty compact case. They make now a 5000 and a 7000D. So, if you're looking for something bigger, you can definitely go bigger, but you don't have to. Looks great and you can't see any of the imperfection because the cables hide it. Yeah, perfect. That's what I that's what I want. Go, that's what we're going for. Okay. Good the good thing about having switching from so I wanted I wanted to use the um I wanted to I wanted to keep the NZXT functionality with the um like the Z series their Z series because I like the, the temperature display because I'm no longer going with the um the what the hell the L C D panel. So having this is actually really nice. Like at a glance, check my temperatures and whatnot. Um, otherwise, I think maybe I would have tried a different AIO. But I really like the NZXT AIOs. I mean, they're ASIC based, so they're easy. Um, and honestly, like any ASIC unit should provide you with similar performance. And then the these look pretty sick. So, so if I put this in here like this, so that's the way that's gonna look. Right? Good. All right. So now we I want to put the fans on first. Actually, no, I don't want to put the fans on first. Um, actually, maybe we'll do this. Let's, uh, yeah, so the fans we're going to be using are Unifans. These are their new AL120s, and the ones that I had before um, were like the SL120s, I think. So, all right. So these are these are their new ones, and. Um, they don't look much different. They, the, the thing about these is that they have um, lighting on the front and the back. So no matter where you put them in your case, you should still be able to see something, which is cool. Um, but these are, these are pretty nice. So this is the front and you have lighting effects on the corners here, like, uh, like right here. And then on the back, you have the same thing. You have lighting effects on the cor on each corner. Like this is a lighting strip. Um, and then the back hub, they tried to make look good too. So no matter where you put it or how you have it facing, it should look decent. Um, I kind of, I am kind of conflicted and if I want to put them like facing out so that I see them out the front or if I put them inside so that I see the light on the inside of the case. But this case is pretty bright as is. So I think I'm gonna put these on the outside, which 
does cause a, an issue with um, mounting. Mounting is kind of a pain, but could 3D print a grommet to cover the marred bits. Yeah, but I think actually I think it looks actually pretty good. So I'm not I'm not too worried about that. Um, I don't know if you're for those of you who have never seen these fans or how they uh, how they snap together um, It's really pretty easy and um, Come on um, They just slide together like that and then now that this is like one unit and you only have to put one cable like on the end to connect to the control panel So that's pretty neat these are really good fans. I like these fans a lot. And they have a uh, good static pressure too. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire this up. Only one USB port in front, that's not good. Uh, no, I mean there are two there. I don't I very infrequently use them, so I don't care like I, I definitely use them on occasion But like most of my stuff is connected up to the back, so it's not an issue All right, so now we have one connected to the end with two cables and controls all three fans So this is this is these are pretty neat pretty Pretty, pretty neat. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. Get in there. I gotta look at what I'm doing here. Cooler Master has a great RGB fan called the Halo, but it has terrible airflow. <laughs> uh, well, then how is it a great fan? Just joining, is this the 4,000 or the 5? This is the 4,000. Uh, wanted something that was still pretty compact, so went with a 4,000. All right, I'm going to try to slide this over just a tad so that maybe you guys can see what I'm doing, sort of, maybe. Okay. Cooler Master fans have historically been problematic, like they either have great airflow but make all the noise. Or, yeah, that's true. They have, you know, despite their name, they have had ups and downs <laughs> in the in that in that realm. They do make some really good fans. They they have some really good products, um, but they're not all good. So um, just be be aware of what you're buying. Look at this the specs. I've also had a couple of Cooler Master fans just up and die on me, and like that's happened multiple times. And I don't think that that's happened with like any other brand. I don't know that I've ever had any other fans die on me where I haven't done anything to make them die. Um, so I don't know, maybe, but that's like, it's kind of in the past, but uh, it's still something that always that I always think about. Do you think a Corsair RM650 is enough for our 3070 Ti founders? Yeah, well, I mean, as always, it depends on what else you're you're building with like if you have a 3070 ti and a, th and a thread ripper chip or something you're probably in trouble well in trouble but like you're probably pushing it but um i mean if you have a 3070 ti and like any like a 5600x or something like you're fine okay So while I do this, what's what's going on? What's good out there? 
Are you guys enjoying this build so far, or is this uh, has this been not not as good as one of my normal, you know, Sunday videos with all the the editing and whatnot? Do you guys prefer to see like this kind of stuff live, or you know, or what? Give me uh, give me some give me some feedback. And then with these, so honestly, when I'm building uh, a system for like a, a, you know, one of my weekly builds or something, I put screws only in the, the two, like two opposing corners of the fans because that it holds them in place and it comes apart quickly anyway. When I'm doing a personal build, I generally do all four screws. However, with the Unifans, because they're all, it's all just one unit, you don't really need to do that. So I did the four corners and then I did two more screws and then that's good. Uh, all right. I'm watching this while eating a juicy nectarine. I haven't had a nectarine in so long. All right, so uh, these fans are in. Let me do the, let me mount the cooler on the CPU. And, uh, and get that locked down. nuts got my nuts will you be undervolting no I will not be undervolting James has a troubleshooting question all my Corsair fans and Corsair AIO won't stop flashing red uh, sorry um, IQ software only says error and that's it can't click or view anything else uh, well that sounds like a problem and um, you should uh, you should call cars here about that because I don't know what the hell I have no idea what that could possibly mean uh, Mike what's up Okay. Thanks for the message, Mike. Keep up the good work. All right, so um, this is looking pretty clean so far. Um, I like this route, and the top of the rad is higher than the pump, so we're good. Uh, I think I should get my EPS in next, and then we could do the top-mounted fans. Okay. So, let me, the power supply we're using is Fractal's Ion Plus 2 Platinum, 860 watts of platinum juice. Fractal, you know, for a company that's pretty small and doesn't produce a whole lot of products, um... The fact that Corsair, that Corsair, that Fractal could put out a really good power supply is surprising to me. And I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're working with whatever OEM they're working with, you know. Um, but at the same time, 
it doesn't make it not a good product. Like it's like this, they're, they have like really flexible power supply cables and like 80 plus platinum is, that's a thing. And I haven't had any problems or heard any stories about reliability being bad. Um, so yeah, good job Fractal on that. And they're, they're not huge either. Like they don't make giant power supplies. They're like reasonable sized, you know, these things are not big at all. You can tell that I haven't used this one yet. And I'm going to have such a mess to clean up later. Holy crap. All right. So uh, I'm going to put the EPS in first. And this is, I, I generally do this with all of my builds. Uh, I put the EPS cables in first and then uh, I kind of drape them down behind and through and then I worry about populating the rest of the case. Is that the wrong end? Oh, this is a PCIe? Did I pick a PCIe? What did I do? Oh no, that was the that was the wrong end. Never mind, guys. Just trying to blow up my own hardware by plugging in the wrong end of the power supply cable. So uh, you know, make sure you do exactly what I do, and that way your system will blow up too. I gotta tell you. I've ruined a lot of hardware in my day. Sometimes I think about it, you know, like how much stuff, how much good undamaged hardware have I purposefully or not, mostly not, per <laughs> have I ruined, you know, um, through various, various things like overclocking or plugging it in wrong or literally just running it till it died or um, spilling water on it or whatever, you know. How much stuff have I ruined during the course of my PC career? I think that the number is high. Uh, Nori, how come you aren't using an RGB power supply like the Gigabyte 750-850GM? I figure there's enough um, enough RGB in here where I don't have to, uh, you know, where I don't really want any more, especially the ones that like with the sparking action, that it's just too much RGB, you know, like you don't want it to be distracting because it's always like popping and like going on fire and stuff. Like sometimes a little fire is nice, but you don't want to overdo it with the fire. Okay. Power supply cables. EPS cables are in. Okay, now I'm going to do the. Uh, oh, now I'm going to do the other. I only have three other fans. I don't know how many could fit up top, but like. I'm going to do two up top and then one in the back. Is this build for your personal use? Yeah, this is my uh, my editing machine that I am transplanting. So that's why you, you don't get a prepared video this week because uh, this is my editing system. So sorry about that. Come on, there we go. So if I put two up top, oh, that's gonna meet. That'll be plenty. That'll be plenty. So these are going to be exhaust. So the only problem with the 
the these fans is you, if you these cables only come out one way because this clip only goes on one way. So now I want these as exhaust, right? And I want to have them in my case as exhaust, but the wires are coming out and I can't face them in. So I have to like reroute. I have to like somehow bring them, wrap them back around. It's not a huge issue, but it is something. Okay. Let's get rid of this temporarily. Some fan screws here. Where's my uh, where's my driver of screws? There it is. Okay. Which editing software do you use? I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Sorry, I'm a little quiet, guys. I'm just trying to trying to get this trying to get this build all wrapped, all wrapped up. So these are going to be like in the middle, right? Like this. Or so that's good, good-ish, good enough. Yeah, I think I like that. Do those Lee and Lee fans need a hub? They do, which is right here. It the hubs come with the three packs. So if you're planning on building with the Unifans, you can't just buy a single. You need to buy the, the three pack. Are you going to have to reload Windows? No, no. I just I transplanted all the the hardware and all my storage, so everything is or should be preloaded. And uh, it might take the OS a second to recognize the new GPU, but other than that, no. Shouldn't really have to do very much. $20 super chat. What with no message? Marky Mike? Does it say Mark Mark Mike? <laughs> yeah, Mark Marky Mike Gonzalez, $20. Thank you very much for the $20. That is that means a lot. I hope that uh, you didn't mean to leave a message and then not. But if you have something you want to ask me, please fire it away fire away and um, Mike will make sure that I see it if I don't. rotate the entire exhaust fan assembly 180 degrees so the wire would be facing the back of the case uh, I suppose I suppose maybe I should have done that but um, I don't know even know why I didn't even think of that that's so basic maybe I should just do that you know what uh, actually no that's not gonna work that won't work there's no cable, there's no opening, like there's no um, cutout in the top over on that side. So, like, hold on, let me show you. So, right now, the wiring is, is here, and it's going, it has to run down and through, right? So, the idea is to flip it, 
and have this wire, instead of being at this corner, be at the bottom corner and just go straight down. But there's no cutout over there that would allow it to pass through. So that, unfortunately that wouldn't work. Although that is a really good idea and I don't know why I just missed it. All right, so we got this so far. We got one more fan uh, that's gonna go in the back. Ideally, should the front fans be taking air in and all other fans back and upper exhaust. So that is an ideal air pathway. I have seen some arguments for uh, you're blowing air in through a radiator and thus the air entering the case is going to be hot. I mean, I guess, um, but if you do it the other way where you have air entering the case and then, so if you, if you don't have the radiator here, if you have it up here instead and air is coming in and then out through the radiator, then you're exhausting the hot interior air through the radiator and thus you're going to have your temperatures for your G, for your CPU are going to suffer. It's just a trade-off, uh, and honestly, it doesn't make a huge difference either way. Like you're you're gonna things are gonna equalize, and you're not really gonna see much of a change, no matter how you orient it. Um, you want to try to balance your airflow as best you can. You don't want to have airflow. You don't want to have fans competing with each other. So, for instance, if you have a um, Oh, crap if you have multiple fans so say you're using an air cooler and you have um, you have a fan you have an exhaust fan and you have fans on your cooler you want to make sure that they're blowing in the same direction um, you don't want your exhaust fan to be uh, competing with the with the tower cooler for air um, but other than that like you could basically orient it however you want and it should work out okay. What the hell? What the hell? What is this? Okay. Um, I wanted to buy some of those AL120 fans, stop when I saw the price. Good looking but way too expensive. Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, when fans start started to get fancy, a few, I, I'll say a few years ago, um, prices really, the new normal on prices for those fans are like crazy high, and uh, I mean, now you see like a you know a fan kit for 120 bucks for three fans, and you're like, ah, I guess that's what it is, you know, so. The hell? So I mean that's it's unfortunate, but like that's just what nice fans cost now, you know. And I don't know if that's because that's what they cost, or it's because what manufacturers want us to think that they cost. <clears throat> Mike, you want me to set all my fans to intake? Ultimate positive case pressure setup. I mean, maybe one time I'll give it a try. But I, I think, I honestly think that there are, there are a lot of like of things that that PC builders get bent out of shape about that are so inconsequential. One of those is uh, positive versus negative pressure. Like I've had people, I've I've done builds where the um, where I've had like four intake and two exhaust, or the other way around. And like the comments are like crazy. It's like what people be like, you're a terrible air pressure in your case. It's got to be the other way around. It will never work. It, honestly, like if, if you do tests, like the amount, the amount of dust it versus it, like with one situation versus the other situation is basically essentially the same. And the amount of temperature difference you're going to get from one, one setting set up to another is basically the same. Like, there's so many things about building PCs that you can personalize because that's the way you want them to look or feel or perform or whatever the case may be and do it. Do what you want to do. But 
the little nuances of things like that like drive me crazy because like while you can talk about them and they have like the they have validity like a little bit of validity the fact that people get so bent out of shape about them uh, i mean you people are focusing their energy in the wrong places what G, what gpu and cpu will we be using so this is a that is a 5950X, and this, the GPU would be a 3080 Ti. Why aren't there more aftermarket closed loop hybrid cooling solutions for GPUs? Sorry if that's out of nowhere. Um, I think it's likely <clears throat> because manufacturers have discovered that most people don't want to disassemble their graphics cards because it is hard. When you're talking about CPUs, uh, it's not that big of a deal because you have to put your CPU in the socket anyway and you have to attach a cooler anyway but when you're dealing with GPUs that is different right like people take people freak out about taking apart a GPU most a lot of people don't want to do it at all so I think that's probably why like I, I think the market is small what do you think of the Noctua Killers Fantex T3120? I don't know. I've never used them. Um, any companies claiming to be Noctua Killers, I mean, there are plenty of really good fans out there. Like, there's, you don't have to be, you don't have to be Noctua to have a good fan, you know? And I don't, I, people, like, companies marketing themselves as Noctua Killers, like, just market yourself based on your own strengths. How about that? That sounds like a good idea. But like, if you want to put Noctua's name in your branding, in your in your advertising, man, you better you better step up. So there are plenty of really good fans out there that do what Noctua does, or or at least close to it. Hold on, sorry. I'm trying to figure out where the orientation for this goes. Okay, so, you know, um, I'm sure those, the Fantex fans are good. Like, I've, I've used Fantex fans in the past. They've been fine. Um, I mean, if they're making a product that focuses more on, like, airflow and whatnot, I'm sure it's good. Like, I'd be happy to use them. But as far as Fantex, as far as, like, Noctua Killers, I don't know. <clears throat> People love telling you about the builds they never even did. That ain't that the truth. It's it's not only that, it's not the builds that they never did, but it's about like hardware that they've never used or had their hands on, or people telling you that like a review you did is like is incorrect and they know because they've used all this stuff. You know what? No, you haven't. Like mo most people haven't. And I'm not saying that there aren't people that have. Like, I'm sure that the there are plenty of people out there who have had their hands on way more hardware than I have, but guess what? Like if you're just talking normal, normal consumers, like I've, I probably have more general knowledge and experience than they do, but they're perfectly willing to say, oh, I know this thing way better than you. Uh, okay. Maybe, but like, can you prove it? Like I, my, my, my proof is on, is on screen. Like I do my testing and show you like everybody else in the comments is just yelling about like. I know this thing and you suck. So I don't know the internet, man. Sorry. I'll be right back. I gotta get a cable. I don't know where this cable went. I had a cable. And now I don't have a cable. Oh, I got a cable. Okay. All right. These, these AIOs 
these uh the AIOs with all of the like wiring harnesses and stuff are tricky because making them look neat is a challenge and a half because where are you going to route those cables like where where is this room coming from you know where how are you going to make it so that nobody sees them um come on come here what i like to do is i like to try to route them underneath one of the legs of the mounting bracket itself this isn't working clearly so maybe we do this and show you what i mean so like right now i'm trying to get this cable this cable routed underneath this uh this nut right here because there's a little space where if you force it through you can kind of tuck it and then you have a lot more control over where that cable is going after that you know like afterwards cool that worked what should I have for lunch well I'll tell you what I have for lunch every day I have salad I have salad with grilled chicken uh, arugula not just not lettuce I have arugula grilled chicken cherry tomatoes and Caesar dressing light Caesar dressing and uh, it's filling, and it's uh, not a lot of calories, and it tastes good. But I can understand, you know, having that every day can get a little tedious for people. My wife, for instance, will, like, you know, she doesn't want to have that every day, so. She's on her own. Okay, we're uh, we're getting close here, boys and girls. Getting close. Getting close. Okay. So now this harness. This harness is a little chewed up. That sucks. All right. If you could, would you rather use 3140s over 3120 fans for intake? It uh, really depends on if I have a radiator attached to that intake or not. Um, generally, 140s are, n are not as good for static pressure as 120s. Um, but all else being equal, I yes, the answer is yes, I guess. Um, You'd want that because they would be quieter. GPU still hard to get. No, oh, I just put a tweet out the other day that uh, I just got four GPUs with no problem. So uh, GPUs are certainly easy to get. Really, really easy to get. Do you mostly have personal contacts when reaching out to RMA a product or do you go through the normal consumer process? Um, so if I bought something, uh, I RMA it like, like a normie, like, uh, like anybody else would. I, I don't, I, I, I do everything I can to, to not try to take advantage of any contacts I have. 
Uh, I will say that uh, I have had some experiences where I've been incredibly frustrated with processes and timeframes and responses and have then uh, pursued other avenues to get something done. Uh, however, it is not preferred. I'm trying to bend these stupid fan pins back. They got bent somehow. And um, if at all possible, I am not, I, I just want to do things the normal way. I mean, honestly, if for nothing else, then because like, maybe I could report on it or like tell people my experience or have a better understanding of what regular consumers go through and like, and you know, have that knowledge to speak about when talking about any product or company or something like that. Um, I mean, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a special boy um, most of the time, but I have had, you know, many instances where like a review sample is broken or something like that. Um, and that goes back through the media channels. <clears throat> a super chat from VC Pester, $10 just because. Thank you very much, sir, or ma'am. Um, very much appreciated. Thank you very much. All right. So, sorry, you guys haven't seen very much of this, but so here is the uh, cable management situation in here. And what I've managed to do with these, let's see if I can get some light down there. Maybe that, Maybe it'll focus better if I have light. Well, that folk, can you guys see that at all? I don't even know. That's not focusing correctly. That sucks. Sorry. But um, so I've tried to tuck those wires in as best I can just to keep that clean. So when I, you know, earlier when we we're talking about like cable management and whatnot, I do cable management up here. Like this is, this is my jam um, because this is what people see. And this is honestly what matters when I'm looking at the case. But when it comes to around back, it's just gonna be a just gonna be a free for all. All right, so now graphics card. about RMAs because I've had issues with Gigabyte recently. RMA made a motherboard under warranty. It got accepted and no further instruction or communication. So you should definitely look up the issues that Gigabyte has had recently. Um, they had a uh, they had a ransomware attack and they had a, a whole bunch of people in their RMA system that had submitted RMAs um, unable to, they weren't able to process those RMAs because that data was stolen and Gigabyte is not paying for that data to be released. So as a result then, all those RMAs that were in process are gone or whatever, I don't know. So I, you need to follow up with Gigabyte about that. They, they have to have some kind of a plan. Like I, I can't imagine they don't, but like, that's why. All right, so this is what I was talking about earlier. This is our graphics card. This is the EVGA For The Win 3 Ultra RTX 3080 Ti. This is the same shroud, same cooler, uh, same design as the 3090. It's a big, thick boy. Um, however, the, the way these plug in, um, is like this. So if I was somehow routing the cables up and back, that would be fine. But these are going to be routed down. And if this is routed down, then all you see is these. So we, what I have to do is I have to take this off and I have to switch it around. So that sucks. Uh, why don't we uh, let me do a split screen for that? 
Where do you normally purchase your GPUs? Newegg Shuffle, EVGA, Notification? Um, I don't purchase many. Um, but when I do, well, like, so under normal circumstances, I guess, uh, I mean, wherever, whoever has them, so I guess like Newegg or whatever. Uh, but um, now, I the the easiest place if you need a graphics card and you know you're going to be paying extra the the easiest place to get one is um on either ebay or the reddit forum the, the subreddit hardware swap um just because there's always quote unquote stock there and you know you could always get a card so like if you need something then you could get it there. It's just gonna it's gonna cost you more, you know. Um, so it real like this this GPU I bought on Hardware Swap because I wanted it. I ne I don't have any other 3080 Ti's, and I I kind of need one for the channel. So I bit the bullet and I bought it. You know it sucks, but sometimes you just gotta do it. Well, I mean at least I do anyway. Vertical mount the GPU, nah. There's uh this this wouldn't fit. It's a three slot cooler. There's only two uh, two slots there. This process is tedious AF though. Flipping this thing around. What's the point of doing this video? What's the point of your comment? Uh, what do you think about pallet GPUs? I have never used one. They're Chinese market, I believe. Um, I mean, it's a company that's been around for a while, I think. I just never have had a chance to work with them or use any of their graphics cards. I think you could buy them. I think they're available. I think you could buy them here. I think so. So, flipped the, the brackets on here that hold on the juicy bit. Uh, where did I, there it is. So, so now, like, the RGB is gonna be on the outside and this is gonna be mounted like this and should curve down. So this should be good. Another super chat, VC Pester. 10 bucks. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. I recently needed a GPU badly and bought one from StockX. Still high price, but they received the card from the seller, verified the contents, and shipped it to me. Yeah, I've actually seen um, a number, a fair number of people uh, going through StockX for graphics cards. And so that is a good way to have like a third party intermediary. Um, I bought. <laughs> I bought shoes like sneakers from StockX in the past, and um, I mean, they do they do decent work. Like they're they're there to help verify the product and facilitate the transaction, and it gives you a little bit of peace of mind. So you know when you're dealing with somebody on eBay, maybe you don't know who they are, and you're like, I don't you know I don't want to give them my thousand dollars or whatever it is for a graphics card, you know. So having that intermediary there is kind of good. And um, I could see why people would want to use a service like that. So yes, yeah, and the, the prices there are gonna be basically the same as you're gonna find on any other reselling forum. 
So you're as much as you're gonna get ripped off anywhere else, you're gonna get ripped off there, but it's not any more expensive. So StockX, yes, another good place. Thanks for the tip. Uh, what motherboard? Which, what motherboard white one do you advise with the same GPU? Thanks. Uh, familiar. So I assume that English is not your first language, and so I thank you very much for the question, but I don't really understand what you're trying to say. Sorry. Um, Nick and Harrison unboxing. What is this build going to be for? Sorry if you said it late to the stream. Okay, no problem. So this is my the build that I ha the featured in the video uh, last week. Uh, but I am transferring it to a different case and uh, changing the graphics card. Do you know of a good white motherboard that is X570 or B550? There are two that I could think of off the top of my head. Uh, NZXT makes a B550 board. Uh, I think uh, they call it the N7 B550 or something like that. Uh, they make a white one. And um, Asus makes their Strix, Strix A, B550A, I think, um, which I have built with on the channel. So if you could go, you could go back and look. Uh, but there's content on that board on the channel. That one is also very good. I, I think so. NZXT has like a hit or miss track record. This is this, this sucks. Uh, hit or miss track record with their boards. Their first motherboards that they came out with looked pretty cool, but they didn't perform well at all and um, were pretty expensive. These recent ones have been better for sure. And I, I wouldn't hesitate to say that maybe you should check them out. But as far as like if you want like the best performing like B550 white board, it's probably the Asus Strix, I would imagine. He wants a white motherboard suggestion to go with the GPU you're presently using. Um, for what, for what chipset or, you know, I don't, um, yeah, I don't know. There's, so for, like we just talked about with the B550s, so maybe that, maybe hopefully that answers this question. Okay, so that took a little while, but, um, so here's the cable now and it's flipped around and everything should be good. Okay. Gigabyte Vision is a white motherboard. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right, I haven't worked very much with Gigabyte. I should do a video where I just talk about like bad relationships that I've had with companies and what, you know, <laughs> just spill all the tea about all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes when not with, with like with companies that I no longer have relationships with um, and why because I, I occasionally really want to say stuff like that um, but I just, I just never do and I know people would probably want to see it too do you use any applications to remove all previous video drivers before installing the new video card so this is gonna use the same exact driver as the 3070 that we're replacing. So in this case, no. However, yes, there, uh, there's the free utility DDU, Display Driver Uninstaller, that, um, crap, that is like the industry standard when it comes to doing that. So yeah, you should, if you're switching, uh, I think the magnetism on this tip is finally wearing off after like years and years and years of use, which is a shame. Come on, get out of there. Get. Come on, magnetize. Do your job. Stupid thing. It's crazy how Amazon made tons of white colored PCB motherboards for X370 series and they did away with it. So they actually used to, they had a bunch for, for Intel boards 
like they but the ones that they made were all like budget chipset uh motherboards and i always was like where the hell are all like just make one for you know i forget what whatever series were like z170 or something you know like make one don't make a b150 board make a z370 board or z170 i don't i don't know you know what i'm saying and um they never did and then they stopped making white boards and i'm like what the hell is the point of that like, uh, there's a market here. Uh, I love the white build video with the thermal take case. Yeah, that was... Shit. That was one of my most popular videos ever, to be honest with you, was the white build I did in the thermal take snow series case. Um, all right, this is... This is the moment of truth. Are we gonna sag? Do we get sag? Sag? No sag? Is there sag? Hold on. There's a little bit of sag. A little bit of sag. Should I try to fix the sag? Hmm. Yeah, one second. Okay, so this is from Lian Lee. Um, this is supposed to go with like one of their cases, but this is the most stealthy anti-sag bracket <clears throat> that uh, I've ever used. So let's try to use it. I gotta unscrew these and then take the GPU out to install this. Okay, so Hey Brian, while you're at it, a couple of strip LED lights to the top and bottom of the case. So, normally I'd say that's not a terrible idea, but we're gonna have like a good amount of light in here. And this, so one of the things that I always tell people about white cases is that you're gonna get a lot more light uh, reflection inside of a white case than you would otherwise. So while if this was a black case, like you're, you're, you're you probably have a good point. Um, when it comes to a white case, you need, you hardly need it. Um, you definitely don't need as much. So, okay. So, This is like the longest video I've ever made. Hope you guys are enjoying it.
Do I think coolers will ever get bigger than the 3090 FE? Uh, or did we hit the size limit last year for consumers? No, I mean, could always get bigger. I, I don't, I mean, especially now that there's, that SLI is not a thing. Uh, I think that um, companies will be okay with making their coolers bigger because they don't have to worry about running into, you know, space restrictions because there's another cooler in there, you know? So, I mean, I never say never. <laughs> if companies determine that it's in their interest to uh, to make something that's that's bigger, they probably will. Did you ever hit 100 miles an hour in your RC car? Um, no. No. The answer is no. But um, first of all, not for lack of trying. And second of all, uh, I, I haven't run it in a little bit. And I have a setup in it right now that I honestly think will do 100. But I've, I've thought that before. So... Um, I mean, we'll see. And I definitely want to put it on video. My my biggest problem is that, like, I want to video this stuff because I think it's freaking cool and fun to do. But I worry about how it affects my channel's metrics overall, you know? So, you know, we'll see. But yeah, I have uh, I have some really cool RC projects in the works, even if it's just like projects for me, you know. And I think that um, unfortunately that just gets lost a lot of the time. Is people like thinking that everything they do has to be for content, and it just really doesn't. Like you could just do stuff because you like doing stuff, right? Lost the screw. All right, I think this will do it. And that's good. Okay, so one of the things that I really like about this bracket is that you can't see it because it screws to the motherboard. So it's in there. It's a uh, it's back there, right? But uh, it and it holds everything level, and you can't really see it. So yay! All done with that. Let's screw in the GPU. Where are my? There it is. Okay. Ryan, you're missing six screws in the front of the radiator. What? Any tips on making hard tube fittings align? Align? So I assume you're trying to do like just straight runs without a bend or something and you want like one to go like just straight across to the other one um, there there are fittings that are designed to give you like if you have a big if you have a big gap like if you're 
So if you're trying to go from your CPU and then you, the port's like down here or something, you're gonna have to do a bend or something, right? But if the CPU is here and like you wanna go straight across, but instead you have to go like down a, a little bit, there are fittings that are made that are offset fittings that can do that and just search on like performance PCs or something for uh, offset fitting and you'll find what I'm talking about. They, they, they just basically, uh, they essentially move the, the, the port just a few millimeters. All right. Man, I'm kind of tired. Where is the thing? What the hell? Hold on. Never mind. All right, GPU sag. Will that eventually damage the PCIe slot? I don't remember mine sagging, but I saw it yesterday and noticed a bit of sag. A bit of sag is fine. A bit of sag is actually pretty normal. Um, I mean, unless you're jostling it around a lot, you're not gonna really damage anything. If you can avoid it, like, you know, try to avoid it but it's not the end of the world. Oh, damn. All right. I don't know why I didn't plug these in before I did my stupid graphics card. Stupid. All right, remember when Jensen told us that the RTX 3080 was the new flagship? I mean, he's not wrong. Um, the 3080 for all intents and purposes is, is the consumer flagship, whereas the 3090 is just a Titan. So that they don't consider, um, they don't consider that to be like the consumer flagship card. They want to sell that to enterprise and, you know, professionals, whatever. But I, you know, whatever. I don't think it makes a difference, honestly. Okay, so. Do I need anything else in here? Don't think so. What do you guys think so far? It's pretty good. Let's get the, uh, let's get this going on. down there come on there it is
What's really sad is the last time I built a PC, the GTX 1080 Ti was the top of the line, and now that's borderline crap. Well, I mean, I don't know who's telling you that it's crap. Like, it's still a really good card. I still think there are plenty of people out there who don't even need that much power. The most popular games in the world are all esports titles that can run at 300 frames per second on a 1080 Ti, you know. Can you please, can we please just plug in here? Can we please cooperate? Can we please? Just one time. Oh my god, this is impossible. These cables are very, very difficult to maneuver. One downside of wanting all the bling. Uh, sort of okay I can't so I can't unfortunately like I can't straighten it out really there's no I can't go straight back with it so it's got to have to have a tilt to it um, eh, I think it's good enough so almost there the strimmers need this controller like three Lee and Lee controllers in there. I assume the GPU is roughly similar in size to the Sapphire Reference 6800, if not bigger. Much bigger. I have to have three Lee and Lee controllers in here. Three! That is absurd. Plug in, dummy. Actually, maybe not. Maybe not. Ah, uh, not. Not, all right. <sighs> I think manufacturers need to figure out a new way to build motherboards where the high-end GPU can get its power completely from the board. Well, that's up to the PCIe standard. Right now, it can only deliver 75 watts. So the, the cards that are getting their power from a board are not going to be really that, that, that beefy. All right. I gotta, wire, I gotta wire this up a little bit. Let me turn this. I can see your faces better. So, we're gonna run all of the, all the fans off of the 
NZXT hub that comes off of the mother that comes off of the cooler. And because we only have three fan connections, because we have a bank of fans, a bank of fans, and a single fan, uh, that means that the, the single three splitter off of the NZXT cooler can handle everything, which is nice. Can you daisy chain the controllers? Uh, so this controller that came with the, the three by eight pin PCIe actually had um, connectivity for the motherboard and the PCIe. Whereas the one that came with the motherboard, the uh, the 24 pin, actually only had the 24 pin and then a smaller PCIe. So this fits both, which I'm happy about. Um, well, what's next? Okay, Lee and Lee can this, this controller. Oh my god! I have so seriously, what a mess. I didn't anticipate this uh, this video to be this long, so I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves here. Uh, well, this sucks. I'm gonna plug in another uh, another USB. Another USB. Okay. Just finished the build in a singularity wraith, and my bends sucked. Says Rodimus. Um, Rodimus, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a while. I I'm not familiar with that case, but I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, one. That was four. No, nope. we want one. One. Two. Three. Done. Okay. So, um, this is almost done. Would you look at that? Almost done. All right, now just time for the power supply. Um, and uh, that should be it, huh? Are both sides of the case tempered glass? No, the 4000D only has one tempered glass panel. The 4000D airflow, anyway. Um, while the 5000 has uh, two tempered glass panels with with airflow cut into the glass which is crazy I really like that design the 5000d is a really good case um, this case is very similar but is smaller so I want I was going for more compact and there wouldn't have been anything wrong with using a 5000d for this build but I am just trying to save desk space because my desk be tiny Actually, my desk is quite large, but I um, I only have a certain amount allocated for this system. Let me put it that way. Brian, you still got to install the OS next. Nah, this is the same storage that was in my other build. So everything transfers, no problem. weirdest case you've ever built in probably that uh well i mean i don't know there's been a bunch but recently anyway the um the thermal take like helicopter looking case pretty weird um there's a lot of those like kind of open air looking cases now though so you know they're getting less odd but yeah that that was just kind of like a weird it's it wasn't even like a normal open air case it was just kind of bizarre 
I liked it. It's different. I own, I'm always down for something different. And uh, you're always gonna, and like in that kind of like open air kind of a system, you're you're always gonna get like good airflow and whatnot. So uh, there's benefits there. <clears throat> Super chat, Robert Perth or Peth, Peth. Just saw the just the video I was looking for. I've been wanting to move to 4000D, but wasn't sure how a front AIO and a long GPU would play together. Question answered. Boom. Nailed it. Thanks, man. Really appreciate your support. And I'm glad I could answer your question. For those of you curious, what I'm doing now is just plugging in all the power supply cables before I uh, get the power supply in there um, to make things easier. I'm not here for the PC build, just the sweet feet picks. All right, do I do that? I wasn't aware that I did that. Maybe an occasionally my feet will make it into a video, but not intentionally, that's for sure. Brian, what's what's your favorite genre of game? Uh, I have always liked first-person shooters, um, but I am not um, I'm not a online like multiplayer guy. I've never been that. I really like first-person, like thorough, in-depth, engrossing first-person campaigns. Have always kind of been what I want, and those are becoming like non-existent so i'm a little disappointed in that but i mean those that's what i like uh i also my favorite game of all time ironically is not that uh, my favorite game of all time is actually final fantasy 3 slash 6 depending on if you are japanese or not um and so I mean I like all kinds of games. They just gotta, they just gotta be um, entertaining and like kind of uh, they they're like video games are supposed to be something that takes you away, right? Like they're supposed to be um, a distraction. So you know as long as I could get into a game like that, then yeah I'm down. Like I, I'll play anything, but. Um, First-person shooters have always been what I enjoyed the most overall, and I think that I am also the best at. Like, not that I'm good, but that is the game that I that I feel like I am the best at. How do you think I got paid from CES? I take pics of your feet while you sleep and sell them online. Listen, man, we're going to have to have a talk once this stream ends. Do you like fighting games? So, yeah, I actually really do like fighting games. I, I used to play a lot of fighting games, uh, like, but they were, but not, but I used to play them in the arcade. So, again, I'm old. Um, but... Yeah, fighting game. I used to play like Street Fighter, Street Fighter Two. Uh, I used to line up in the arcade with like you put your quarter up and you get online and like, you know, you inevitably lose to somebody who's way better than you. Um, and then you put your quarter up again and you go wait in the back of the line. I used to spend hours doing that. Um, yeah, I do like fighting games, but they're not my favorite. Okay, so here is the front, and then I haven't done anything with this yet so here's the rear which which side do you guys think looks prettier 
it's a tough call. Tough call. So, this is done. Um, let's plug it in and press the power button. Uh, watch it light itself on fire. And then we'll end the stream. Okay. Ready? There are lights. Pretty sweet. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Let's uh let me mess with this for a second. make this not red stop being red come on oh that's speed Color. Is there like a crazy stupid rainbow option? Is there not a rainbow option? How is it possible there's no rainbow option? It's got to be a rainbow option. Red, green, blue, yellow, light blue, purple, white, off, back to blue. I'll find it. We'll make it happen. Oh, all right. So, uh, I'm done. This is all done. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I am tired, and I need to get this all bundled up because we got to. Uh, I got to put it back in my my PC. Um, but uh, yeah, this was pretty cool. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, three hours. Damn. Yeah, we're going to kill this stream now. Um, I don't know. Take care, everybody. We'll see you, uh, see you next week.